Good morning internet. We are on a road trip with Little Red Witch and Little Red Witch's friends. The reason for this road trip is we were supposed to go to Brisbane in March but COVID and then we were going to go to the North Island this month but Auckland went into lockdown and going to the North Island seemed like a really stupid idea so instead we've decided to go to Waimati because why not? What's Waimati got you ask? Well that's what we're going to find out We made it to Waimati. It's a lovely little town, lots of very old buildings. Something we're sort of missing in Christchurch. nice building but that's going to come down in the next earthquake this could be just me being a Christchurch person I'm not sure who this guy is but he's impressive to the bush heritage. this sculpture is based on a photograph of sawmillers at the was it the Hawk Hawkins brother mill it's quite effective really it's just sitting on a log this the statue is of Margaret Cruikshank and she was the first registered doctor in New Zealand, woman doctor I should say, in New Zealand and sadly she died in 1918 because of the influenza um, outbreak that happened after World War I and I just happen to think it's a really cool history. Seems kind of appropriate that we're here in the middle of a pandemic. I love this kind of small town New Zealand stuff, the people that they choose to honour. This is Stella Chamberlain who for 35 years washed the local rugby club's jerseys by hand and as a result of that they honoured her with being the first woman to be a life member of the rugby club and this painting. This is a memorial to the first Pākehā settler in Waimati. Normally the early settlers get big stone statues. So. Ah, okay, it's, the, it's in honour of the chief who welcomed him as well. So these silos depict Michael Studholm, the first Pākehā settler, meeting Te Huruhuru. Obviously this was a big moment for Waimati as they like commemorating it. We can't find the plaques to say who these two are on the silos but I think the soldier's supposed to be Ted. We're going to go and see his beer bottle later on. And probably the woman is Margaret Crookshank. Apparently the only notable woman in Waimati other than the one who washed the rugby club's jerseys. This is definitely the silo of every famous person who was ever anywhere near Waimati. <laughs> That's Norman Kirk, a former Prime Minister. There's something very colonial about this image. <laughs> that little house tucked under the trees there is called the Cuddy. 
It's on private land and we're actually on private land at the moment. We had to come up a private road to get here. But the person at the information centre said it was okay, so we're trusting her. But that was the first house built in Waimati by the Studholm family. Good old Michael Studholm, who we've, we've encountered a few times. It was built in 1854 and it's called the Cuddy because that was the name for a cabin on a ship, it was the Cuddy. And it's built with totara slabs that are three or four inches thick, all cut from a single tree. So that's what the first Pākehā who lived in this area lived in. We're in Victoria Park on the edge of Waimati and this is the easiest place to see wallabies because they have a few here in captivity along with a selection of random birds because, you know, small town park. Hey wallaby! Wallabies are not native to New Zealand. They're definitely an Australian animal, but for some reason, some were let loose in the wild around Waimati and pretty much took over the place. They're, they're considered as much of a pest around Waimati as rabbits are in the rest of the South Island. But they've become a little bit of a tourist attraction around Waimati, so, which is why they have some in the park. All of these look so tiny when you have the chickens next to them, don't they? Random sort of aviary here. Why are we in a cemetery again? <laughs> well, apart from the fact I absolutely love cemeteries, this is the, is the um, memorial and gravestone for Mary Gorman, who was on a ship that was torpedoed in, during World War I. She actually jumped in to save a friend who was on the same ship, to save her friend, um, but sadly Mary died. But there are two two people from Waimati who died in that torpe ship that was torpedoed and I don't actually know whether they did retrieve the bodies or this is just a memorial for Mary. I really don't expect that they would have been having much effort in recovering bodies and sending them back home during the war because we are talking 1915. Seems appropriate to end the video in the cemetery. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of Waimati. Don't forget to do all those nice internety things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. And I'll see you next time. Bye internet.